This week, INMPI is brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit, and this week's INMPI is from Johnson Electric. Lady Ada, what is this week's INMPI? Okay, so this week's uh, INMPI is from a new company, so welcome to the INMPI party. Uh, this is from Johnson Electric. It's a, uh, a Hong Kong-based uh, company that makes motors and, and other motion control um, devices, and they have these pretty cool... Uh, I call them pancake, although I think that there's probably some other name for them. Um, but short solenoids. Maybe um, it calls a pancake. I'm going to call it pancake. I don't know. I, every time something is kind of like round and flat, you know, in electronics, you tend to call it pancake. So uh, I'm going to call them pancake solenoids. Um, so they make uh, a range of different um, motor control devices. Uh, in fact, their their history, which I'll talk about in a little bit, is is pretty neat. Um, they make, you know, uh, steppers and DC motors and and other coils and piezo stuff. Um, and uh, so, you know, you know, motion control, when people talk about motion control, usually um, is uh, something like a DC motor. And, you know, the motor is, a lot of people have seen motors before, um, you know, you apply AC or DC current and it rotates like there's yeah, permanent and, and electromagnets inside and it rotates round and round. Um, and so you get uh, rotational motion and then you can convert that rotational motion uh, with a rack and pinion. Here's a 3D print project that we did uh, which has eyes in it, but you don't have to have eyes on your rack and pinion. Yes, you do. But it helps, um, and this turns rotational motion to linear motion. This is a repetitive linear motion. Um, there's also, uh, you know, if you have a stepper motor and a worm gear or a, a lead screw, you can turn it into linear motion. So this is from a, a CD-ROM or DVD player, and you can um, you can perform, you know, fairly fast. Um, linear motion this way, uh, and it's very uh, precise. Um, but it isn't; it doesn't have. It has a lot of force to it, but it isn't kind of like instantaneous. Um, and for that kind of instantaneous motion between two p set points, um, you would use something like a solenoid. So um, this is a push-pull solenoid that we stock in the shop. And basically, uh, you can see in the middle there's that blue section, and that's the um, coil, right? So there's a coil of copper of diff you know of a variety of gauges and number of turns and that the number of gauges sorry the number of turns and the gauge of the the um, coil wire is what determines the resistance and the power and also the force by which the slug which is that center bar moves in so when you apply current to um, the coil uh, it you know thanks to Maxwell's equations it forms an electromagnet and the slug is pulled in towards the, um, the center of the coil um, this is like a cool uh, diagram showing um, the force, the electromagnetic uh, force is strongest in the center. Um, there's a moving slug. Sometimes it's captive. Sometimes there's a spring. Um, so this is a push-pull. And as you can see on the left, there's a spring. So every solenoid works the same way. It always pulls the slug into the center of the coil. Um, but then when the voltage and the current, the power is released, um, this particular uh, solenoid has a spring that you know brings the slug back out and doesn't this spring isn't as strong so if you want it to like perform a strike or move you know uh, move something um, you're gonna get the most force on activation not on the release unless you have a very strong spring but most people don't um, so the the solenoids that they make if you compare to the previous solenoids we showed those are all rectangular and those are kind of the standard ones they're like can candy bar shaped um, solenoids there's a, you know a coil and there's a rectangular frame um, these are interesting because they're much flatter um, so they're easier to tuck into an area because um, they do have a big coil but the coil is kind of instead of like long and thin it's wide and flat like a pancake um, and so they make a variety of different uh, solenoids and I'll show you that the size range is quite extreme I, I ordered two and I didn't even realize how different I mean I looked at the photos but like until you have it in your hand don't realize like how much different um, the sizes are um, but the good news is that there's uh, step models for each solenoid so if you want to use it in your mechanical uh, design and um, none of these come with springs um, so their turn spring usually that's built into your design like usually the frame is what has that return force um, and so it's not built into um, the solenoid on purpose um, do check uh, the uh, spec sheet for each one. Um, there's, I think, uh, 12 volt and 24 volt, and there might be um, maybe a 36 or 48 volt one as well, although I definitely bought 12 volt ones because that's what I like to use the most um, because I have 12 volt 
power supplies. Um, usually people use whatever power supply they need. I will say uh, these are, use a lot of current, right? Solenoids are high current devices. So we're talking about a couple amps a piece easily, um, you know, depending on the size. And so, you know, be aware of that. You don't need a, a very clean power supply, but you do need a lot of current. And um, solenoids don't, or at least these I didn't see any that are latching type. So basically, as long as it's activated, as that slug is pulled in, you're drawing a lot of current. So um, when you spec it, you know, do pay attention to the sizes and uh, current requirements, the voltage requirements, and they have a, a, a wide range. Um, another thing that was kind of interesting is, you know, I always go to the YouTube channel of the um, company to see if they have any videos demonstrating or, or um, showing off the capabilities of the NPI that we've chosen. And um, while I didn't find any solenoid videos, I found some other motor videos, um, I did find a really cool series um, in the Johnson Electric um, YouTube channel called um, like Chats with Old Timers. And yeah, it's like a documentary. It's, it's cool. kind of neat because they just found like, you know, these women and men who've been working at um, the Johnson Electric factories in Hong Kong since like, you know, 1970s, 60s. Um, when the company was formed and you know they had really cool old photos and stories about what it was like and you know this is one of the first companies to make motors in Hong Kong and at the time um, you know, now of course we think of of China and Hong Kong as major electric manufacturing and export uh, companies but at the time you know they were making toys but they were not making the electronic components those weren't being imported uh, in this case from Japan and so um, you know this um, company Johnson um, you know, they decided they wanted to try making uh, motors themselves. And I guess they used to do garment as well. Another thing is interesting is the um, name Johnson. You th you'd think that perhaps the name of the company came from a guy named Johnson, but it's actually not. It's a transliteration of, I guess, like a Cantonese uh, phrase that means um, all the quality that you can fit in every inch of a product. Whoa. Like it's, it's a transliteration, like which is backwards, right? Mm. Like usually... Like we have Coca-Cola and then when it gets transliterated into like another language, they kind of try to make it fit to have some We meaning. have a little bit of that video, a minute of it. You want to play yeah, it? Yeah, we'll play it. All right, we'll play that at the end. Or you can now. play it now. Yeah, let's play it now. Okay. And, and then we're going to... I forgot that I included the video. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll, we'll come in for the big conclusion. Okay. So here you go. Uh, the name Johnson, uh, in Chinese, it is called Zhou Chun. So it means the construction, the best construction. Chun means inch. Every inch of work means every stitch of work. And my dad later told me why he picked the motor is because he believed the little motor will be something which is going to be there forever, in a way, that affect people's lives, that you will use it in many, many appliances. I think it was a genius decision. I'm thankful for it every day. Motion systems, electric motors, is affording us way more opportunities, like I just said, than uh, potentially being, you know, Garmin, for example. You know, it was difficult years in the beginning. We are the first one in Hong Kong to make the motors. Before that, you know, the toy factories in Hong Kong are all importing expensive motors from overseas. I don't think my dad understood how it worked. Being contrarian, if you don't have a local customer, find one overseas. If you don't have technology local, go to the place with the technology. So in a way, this is what happened to Johnson. All right, we're back. Okay, so I basically told the story of this company, but then the video. But do you go and watch the two videos? Because I watched them and they were like, even though I didn't know anything about this company, they were really well-made and awesome videos. And it was really neat to listen to folks talk about the history of Hong Kong and manufacturing because it's, it's honestly not that different than the story of New York manufacturing. Yeah. So I thought I, that it was a little bit of a reminder of the, the radio industry here in New York. Okay, so anyways, about these solenoids. Um, there's a lot of different solenoids. I, I took a quick screenshot. There's just a lot of different ones, and they're all on stock. Um, I just picked one that I thought was, uh, you know, pretty cool. It's, it's a chonker, and I'll show it off. Um, and... Uh, they're just massive. This one has a 3D model view. It's available on Digicade. That it's available is on a chunk. Let's uh, go to the overhead. Yeah. Chunk, chunk. So I will warn you, this big one, which is the one I picked, um, it'll mess you up if you're not careful. Yeah. So, so I'm just going to show, like, this is the motor, and I've got this 12 volt. And you'll see how um, incredibly strong it is. Hold on. It's kind of scared. It is a little scary. Really? Yeah. Okay, ready? Uh, yeah. Whoa. 
Yeah. Like it'll it'll actually that like wants to hurt you. It'll mess up your finger. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's put that away. We're gonna put this away. Uh, and we're going to bring out its small friend. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Hi, little buddy. Hey, buddy. So this is the, the mini one. All right, don't um, feed that one too much. No, this guy, yeah, no. This is a little baby. Um, but this um, shows. So, yeah, when it's, uh, and, you know, it's still, it's still quite strong. Like, yeah. I yeah, can, can't quite. Yeah, that can uh, pinch you, though. It, it, yeah, do be careful. Yeah. But this is the slug, and so. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be careful. Yeah. Here, I'll release it. Yeah, okay. And then you can, right. there's a little um, ring there. Yeah. Um, but uh, Oof, I'll okay. do this again. Most dangerous ion MPI yet. Yeah. And so normally you would have a spring on the back, like some, maybe some rubber or like a, you know, a metal that will push it back out. Um, and each one, uh, do check the data sheet for the um, stroke. Like it doesn't work if you have it too far out. Like it does have to be, you yeah. know, partially. You have to make sure it's the right. There you go. It's partially okay. About. okay, so uh, little mini solenoid and big chunker solenoid. So uh, do watch out for your fingers with this one. But um, for the strength you're getting with this solenoid, it is not a very deep one. I mean, this isn't actually much deeper than the solenoids that we stock, but it's like much more likely to, to crush you. In a good and way. that's this week's Ion MPI. Ion MPI.